Hi everybody, welcome to Cake Tastic Cakes. It's Jen and I'm going to show you today how to make some roses. And I'm going to show you how to make them with tools, without tools, just a couple different techniques. So if you see me using any supplies you can use, check the link in the description below and it should be able to help you out. Now to start with my first rose, I'm going to start with the center. I'm going to make a teardrop kind of shape out of gum paste and you can put it on a piece of spaghetti if you're going to be sticking it like in the side of the cake or something. But since mine are going to be sitting on top, I'm just going to make a couple little teardrops just like that and put them aside. All right, the first one I'm going to show you is how to make a rose using the tools, you know, that come with rose making kits and everything. So I rolled out my gum paste nice and nice and thin, very thin. I'm using the smaller rose stamp setting to print out three of the little roses that you see there. And I'm going to lay them on my sponge here. And I'm going to use my ball tool and I'm going to roll and feather out the edge of each of the petals. So I'm going over it pretty, like pretty firmly, I got to say, going over the edge. And as you do it, you're going to see it kind of starts to like wrinkle and fold up a little bit and just kind of get a little more wavy. I'm doing the center of the petal a little bit just to kind of thin it out because you really want nice thin petals as thin as you can get them. And I know that this may not be like the way certain name brands would want you to necessarily do it, but it works. It makes a very pretty rose. This is what I do. So this is what I'm showing you. And this is how you do it, you know, or how you use some of the tools. Now, once you have that centerpiece, you're going to put a little bit of water down in the center, put your teardrop on it. And now that top petal that I'm folding, you're going to roll really, really tight around the center so that it now closes off the top. You see, you can't see and you can't see your little teardrop anymore. All you can see is the curled up petal. Then you go to the opposite side, put a little bit of water on, to, like the bottom half of the petal, and then press it up against the rosebud. Gonna move back opposite again, take another one, fold it up, again, just halfway, you know, with the water on the petal, brush it up, place it up against it, and leave it fanned out a little at the top. I'm gonna to do the same thing on the opposite side again. You just kind of keep going back and forth. And that way you build the rose up pretty evenly. And I don't know if you saw the video that I had on how to make gardenias. You use the same kind of a technique of um, the, the kit and everything with those rose cutouts, but you do it in a spiral one. This one you go back and forth, back and forth. So it doesn't just become one big twirly flower out. Now I've taken my second one. These are these three are the same size. So I've taken the second one, same thing. Going to put a little water in the center, place it down on top. And when I do this, I'm going to place it so that the seam between the two petals on the bud itself is going to be lined up with an actual petal. So when it folds up, it's going to cover the seams between the other flowers. Now this one, I'm going to do the one at the top, as you saw this one here. I'm going to leave it fanned out a little bit more. So maybe like, you know, two thirds of the way up instead. No, that would be more than what that. Oh, too long ago. Yeah, not two thirds, be less than that. About one third of the way up. Go back and forth again with it. Lift it up gently, nice and neat. No problems here. And there you go. So you can stop at any point, however big you want your roses. If you like this, you just want a little rose, stop right here. If you want a big one, you're gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going a little bit more because I do have to make it a decent size. So I'm just gonna keep doing the same thing. I, I rolled out the edges of the petals, made them all kind of wavy and wiggly and you know a little thinner, set it on there. You see how that one seam between the two petals was lined up with a full petal. So I'm covering up the seams again. And this at this point, I'm just kind of going around the rose, um, not worrying so much about going opposites because once you get away from the bud, it's just all laying open enough that it's not, you know, really directional anymore. It's just a flower. So that's what I did here. And now it's getting to the point where I'm going to put it on one of the little cups that you can get for supporting flowers when you make them. So here's my little cup. I put a little piece of paper towel in it because otherwise I've found that it sticks to it because you know there's no room for it to dry. Clean off my surface. And now I'm using the bigger cutter. So I'm making one big one here. And again, it came with the kit. It was all together. I'm rolling out the edges just like I did with the smaller ones before. Going around each one, you see how it kind of lifts and wrinkles up a little bit. Yeah, that's a good thing. You wanted to do that. And right there, it tore one of my little petals. You can see to the left, it kind of tore. 
it's fine. You know, I'll just pinch it into shape because it's gum paste and I'll just give it a pinch and it'll add a little extra wrinkle to it when it's all said and done. So as you can see, I just laid it down. It's big enough now, again, that I'm not going to worry about, you know, going opposites when I lift the petals up. You're going to see that it's going to stick out a little further when you do lift it up. So that's okay too. And in this case, if I wanted to go bigger, you see when you lift it up, it really just <laughs> doesn't matter. And yeah, there you go. So put it aside, let it dry. And again, if you want it to go bigger, then you're going to do more layers of the big flowers. All right, this is how I'm going to make a rose without using any tools. I made a ball in my hands, as you saw, to make the teardrop shape. And now I took another ball and I'm just pinching it between my fingers until I get it nice and flat and make a nice little disc out of it. And that's going to become my first petal. So there's no molds needed here, no ball tools needed here. If you just wanted to make a rose, this is how you do it. So you start, you wrap that petal around nice and tight, just like before so that you don't see the teardrop in the center. I know it shows at the bottom. That's fine, we're gonna cover it. Keep taking your balls, keep rolling them between your fingers. I'm using a little paintbrush here to add water to it. If you don't have that, if you just touch it with your finger, you know, and rub a little bit on, then it will be truly toolless, right? So there's another petal that I just roll, you know, pinch between my fingers. And when you pinch it, you're going to feel how thin it becomes. You're gonna feel the fat places that need to be made thinner, whatever. So don't worry about that. You can, you can really feel the difference and you want it to be nice and thin. So shoot for thin. As you're laying them on, just keep working your way, covering up the seams of the other flower or the other petal that you just put on. See how that one flattened out and kind of flopped over when I attached it. That's okay. What's happening is my hands are warm, of course, and by pressing it between my fingers, making it really thin, it's making it soft. It's becoming softer than it otherwise would, but it'll be fine. Don't worry about that. Keep going with your petals. Keep making your petals. Keep adding a little bit of water to the bottom half of them. Keep sticking them on here and there and keep on building. And as you get bigger, you know, find the size that you like and then you're going to stop there. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep rolling it. Pinch, 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 pinching it. Make a nice flat petal going to add a little bit of water to it once I get a nice size out of it. And again, I'm not going to worry that I'm making it soft and floppy. It'll dry. It'll become nice and firm. So, and I'll show you how to set it up. So no worries there. All right. Here's how you're going to set it up. If you don't have the little cup and fancy stuff to, you know, to store your flowers in, roll up a piece of paper towel into a loop, as you saw, you know, twist it up into a loop staple it now you got a circle i've tried using tape and tape just doesn't stick to paper towels put a little piece in the center and you've just made yourself a flower drying dish you see that isn't that nice still no fancy tools required okay so now i'm going to keep on building up I'm going to keep on adding my petals i'm going to jump kind of to the end here to where i felt like i was good and i was done and yeah there it goes i'm putting it in my little homemade cup and now some of the petals, again, were kind of droopy because I made them so warm. Take a little scrap of paper towel, a little tiny rip, just like that, fold it in half, and tuck it between the petals that you want to really separate and stand up. And then just let it dry like this. And that way your rose will be nice and perky. You can see the one to the right, you know, kind of off the screen there. It's very perky. That is a big difference, but you know what? It works, so you can do it this way too. And this way requires zero tools. All right, here's another kind of like a cheat way to make a rose. I'm not a fan of this particularly. I don't think it comes out as nice. I would rather, if I didn't have any tools, you know, do the pinch method. But this will get you a nice little simple rose and, you know, it'll still look pretty. So no worries there, right? Take your bud, or excuse me, I rolled out that long piece. I have my little teardrop. I put water along the bottom and I had cut it at an angle so it goes bigger as you go. So now you roll it up, as you saw me just do, pinch off the bottom. You're going to end up feeling, you know, where your little teardrop begins. And now you just got to separate it out a little bit to make it just kind of look a little bit nicer. You don't have to if you didn't want to. It's just how I do it, you know, on the very, actually, I should, shouldn't say that. I don't really do this method. I just wanted to show it to you because it is an option. If you, you know, don't trust your skills or something, you can just do the roll up method. So I'm just kind of flaring it out a little bit around the edges. I trimmed off the bottom a little bit 
just separating it out. If you don't have that little tool I'm using, use a knife blade or something. Just be careful. You don't cut it. And then you got like a simple, you see, it's a pretty little rosebud. It's kind of cheaty, <laughs> but it does work. Here is another way to make a rosebud. Take your teardrop again. Do the pinch method to make a big old petal, a big old petal. I'm rolling it nice and tight around the top so that you can't see the teardrop in the center. Take one more petal, a little bit of water. Again, I just pinched and pinched it between my fingers. Roll it kind of on, on, wrap it around a little on the opposite side. And then when you attach it, make sure you cover up your initial little teardrop. And then, yeah, put it aside. There you go. Rosebud. These are some leaves I'm going to make. I have the kit. I have this little veining pad here that makes the impression. So I just wanted to show this to you. And if you have this set, then, you know, this is the way to go. I'm using gum paste again for these because I don't want them to dry and become hard. Um, I know you can use a uh, fondant to make a rose. As long as it's not too big, your petals will be fine. I'm using gum paste. And this is how to make one without a tool or without the mold. Take a piece of gum paste, flatten it into a teardrop shape here. I'm using my knife blade to put lines down, rough up the edges. Put a line down the center with my knife. Chop, 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 chop the sides, all up it. And there you go. It's not quite the same, but it's pretty comparable. So again, flatten the teardrop shape. Chop, chop, chop the edges, just like that. Put a line down the center. Put little chop chops up the side. Be careful you don't cut all the way through. And now you've got your homemade molded and moldless roses. And they both come out beautiful. They, they will be perfect. So I hope you found this video helpful. Please like and subscribe because it does help me out. Check out my many other videos I've got out there. And as always, thank you for watching Cake Tastic Cakes.